Hello everyone, welcome back to another grand thing of well, finds and pickups and such. So uh, this will include the usual kind of thrifting and buying and trading, but also my trip for uh, the first week of October to visit my sister or some pickups I got there too. So let's get started. What, what the rifle stack? I think let's start with some of the things that you can't see over here. Get some of the mystery stuff out of the way. So, in the oldies, but nothing but the coolies, we got Goblin Quest 3. Now, this is an interesting find because it's a boxed version, but sadly, it doesn't have too much with it. It does have its manual and somebody's notes for things to do. So, it does have that. Let's see. What's this? Yeah, apparently these are wow. This is this is a little from nineteen ninety five. It's actually somebody with an email. Wow, these are actual these are actual messages somebody did in 1995 for help with the game. Wow, that's very bizarre, actually. This, <laughs> um, but uh, it's in black and white. Has very few screenshots, so not too much to really see inside. But it does have its original booklet, and it is in in hard floppies, not soft uh, bendy floppies, but. Uh, and it has uh, one advertisement thing that doesn't really have anything on it. So, it's a bit... Uh, I'm sure there was other stuff that come with it. Because in my experience of Sierra box games, uh, there's usually all kinds of colorful advertisement stuff usually with them. So, uh, the box is a bit beat up. I do have these on GOG. I haven't played them. They'll supposed to be uh, really wacky. And I think they were pretty popular in Europe, uh, the Goblin Quest games, if I remember correctly. Another very comedic and probably social justice warriors would be triggered like fuck over them, probably. Probably, probably. Then I got a new Play Asia exclusive, which is actually not too bad. Uh, this particular game, um, I can't remember what it was. Um, it was a Namco game, I believe, that reminds me of. Well, it's a, it's a game where you're trapped in a little womb as a ship and... You move and shoot all around you with the two analog sticks trying to survive and complete objectives and that. Uh, it's pretty good. It's story is... Eh, it has a story, but it's not something I would say to get really invested in. I haven't gone through the Italian story, though. But uh, I have enjoyed the gameplay. It just really reminds me of that one game. I just can't think of the title. There's a new PS4, Xbox One version of that game, too. So I, I know... I know it's out there, I just can't remember what it was called off the top of my head. Someone someone out there might be able to be like, you fool, what was that? And it comes in a collector's box that has a soundtrack and that. Uh, I got number 301. Um, I have to say, these, these boxes are pretty nice, considering the price point that uh, PlayAsia puts on them. Uh, this is probably my favorite one that PlayAsia's done, too. Now this I haven't opened up. It's supposed to come with like a 50 page art book. But uh, one of my viewers has been playing this and it seems very, very fan service But it is an RPG, a tactics RPG I believe, right? Strategic battles and that. Yeah, it looks like a tactics RPG. Um, I've heard good things about it though. So I haven't heard it's bad or anything. So uh, I picked up a copy of this. I meant to pre-order it. But I didn't get around to it, and there was a good price on Amazon, and it was still the uh, launch edition of that. I still need to get the other one that's out, too, that I'm really behind on some of my pre orders this year. Very, very behind. Bah, 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 bah. Uh, speaking of more collector boxes, the Beach, Be uh, Peach Beach Splash No Short, No Shoes, All Service Edition. Uh, which, as far as I know, is the only standard edition, actually. Like, there's no actual standard edition without this box and art book and as far as I know so <laughs> it comes with 
a alt book, which has actually a pretty big devotion to uh, the Waddle Guns, but it also has the usual suspects of, um, let's try to find the least triggering thing of YouTube. No, YouTube will get triggered over that. You know, let's play it, let's use that. <laughs> but it does have some lovely art inside in that of all the goals in that. And you also get this very large sized box heel that has the soundtrack in it. So it's very nice packaging. And to be honest, this, uh, the box that it all comes in is actually a pretty decent story. Um, the next one I'm going to show is much better quality in that. And of course, if you want to see the actual game, I've only played literally a few minutes of it. I have not really done much with it. But I would like to note that I was surprised to see that the, bo <laughs> the book's going to be triggering. Uh, the book, it has a book. Not only that, it's in color. <laughs> so um, <laughs> let's put those away. Somebody again might get triggered. <laughs> but uh, I have not played a lot of that, so I can't really give an opinion on it yet. Let's see, moving on. Uh, I'm going to save that for a little later. Let's save that one for a little later. Let's show some stuff. So, some of you already know I recently got a Switch. So, my first import, uh, imp, import game was I am sin, 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 I'm trying to remember how to pronounce it. It's even worse because I can't see it in English because <laughs> it's Japanese. But uh, the Japanese version does have um, the English on it for some reason. I, I don't know. I'm. I guess it just figured they make it uh, have all languages on it. But um, this is a Square Enix uh, traditional Japanese RPG. I did a uh, one hour let's try of it. Uh, I enjoyed it. I look forward to actually doing a full playthrough of it. It looks very interesting from what I played in that. Uh, Cave Story was my first Switch game I got. Uh, very nice and I was very glad to get a launch edition which came with a little bag that gives you a keychain, and I got one of the characters I would prefer, but uh, eh, don't want to really open it. I forgot it was in a sticky bag. It was always panging it back in there, but it, it's coolly. So I was happy to get one of her. It comes with a miniature disc soundtrack and a very NES style booklet, and it's the only only Switch game I've seen come with a booklet, but I really hope a lot more companies do these. It is fashioned after, like, um, see, I mean, if you ever seen a NES booklet for America, this is very reminiscent of it. It's very colorful, they do lots of artwork, and they even warn about spoilers, and they even give hints at the end of the book to help you find the true ending and stuff. So, a uh, very fun, silly little book. I definitely say if you have a Switch, you never played Cave Story, get the, definitely try to get the launch edition because uh, it comes with all these goodies. I'm assuming the book comes with all of them, but the disc and the keychain, uh, from what I understand, are launch editions only. Um, this has co op in its update. And um, I look forward to trying that out with Aaron or anyone, really, who wants to try that. Uh, my only little gripe is this stuff doesn't honestly fit in here very well without kind of bending the case. So I've been kind of doing that for now. I need to put the keychain somewhere. Uh, Splatoon 2. Um, it's just Splatoon 1 with more stuff, adjustments, a new story mode, and it has a new PvE mode. Um, I did some live streams. I stopped for a little while because Nintendo's little drama thing about the Nintendo program. Uh, after doing some research, I will be able to do streams again because uh, that news only affiliates to people who are full partners with the Nintendo Kratos program, which means your entire channel is dictated by Nintendo, which very few people do that. I don't know anyone that does that, to be honest. Uh, but basically, those are the people that are dictated by it, and that's going to make less people want to use that. Uh, Mario, De uh, Mario Kart Deluxe 8. Um, I don't really into Kart Wasters or racing games in general, but 
for some reason, I just decided to throw money on a new copy of the game, and uh, I've actually enjoyed it. I haven't gotten too good on the online, but uh, I have actually been enjoying it. That. So it, it's been a long time since I played a Mario Kart game. I think it was like the N64 was the last one I've ever played, I believe. Uh, some trades I got with GameStop stuff that I've dug up. Uh, Yoshi's Topsy Torvi. I've never owned or played it before, so I uh, got that. And um, this Atlas game I've never heard of. Uh, Cosmo Tank. It's um, It plays like a top-down uh, little tank game, and then you get in dungeons that go in a first-person mode. Uh, very little I played the... Uh, the boss fights are really unforgiving from what I played, but I may not fully knew what I was doing either. But it is published by Atlas. It's incredibly hard to see, and you probably won't be able to really see it. But it's in the corner there. You can see the fuzziness of the Nintendo logo there. It is right above it, and it mixes into the background there. Camera won't focus. Probably wouldn't be able to see it even if it did, because it literally mixes in there. Uh, if it wasn't for uh, it being uh, presented to me in a Game Boy to try, I would probably never really notice the logo that easily. Um, but uh, yeah, never heard of it. That. And there's another Atlas published game that I have in the stack that I also never heard of. Uh, Duke Nukem 3D for the PC. Um, nothing too particularly special there. And then War Games Defender 1. I have... I really never heard of this. Um, it's apparently by MGM Interactive. Um, it has two player analog control support. Uh, the case is a little beat up, but because uh, it's uh, detached. But it does have its booklet and disc. What you know? See, I can't remember the set times. Uh, it's a little light scratched. I couldn't remember the condition. Yeah, but uh, I can replace, obviously, the case. I luckily got lots of spares that I try to keep stocked up. But uh, it looks like a kind of strategy, real-time strategy thing with tanks, battleships, MKV walkers, gunships. So uh, it looks interesting, that. So I picked that out as a trade item. Then let's see. Let's save those for a little bit here. Now... I never heard of this, the, uh, not even sure how to pronounce it, E-U-R-E-K-A-I-E-U-E-K-E-N-7, Volume 2, The New Vision, like, this is some anime thing here, it's, uh, Namco, Bandai Namco, well, I don't really know, it looks like some weird racing mech thing that I have something, I'm not really sure of anything about it. It's in perfect condition. It has its booklet and its disc. So it's in great condition. So it's good in that. It has no scratches on the disc. And it was like, I think, three bucks. Uh, Mist Full Revelations. Um, I've still never played any of those Mist games besides one. Um, honestly, they're way too puzzle oriented to me. Uh, I really like stuff more like uh, 999's kind of design with puzzles. Um, Mist really just... It's a very ominous kind of thing where you really have very little reaction to anything while doing puzzles. and I don't know, that just makes it feel really dry to me. But hey, there's I know there's audience for Mist, so... But... Um, I didn't have that one. I had missed it 1 through 3 for a very long time. Um, so, I, I figured I'd pick it up. Uh, GoldenEye 7 I got for, I believe, 250 or something at Goodwill. That um, It has everything. I think it had some light scratches on it. Um, I hope this is not a very good... Uh, no, actually, it's in good condition. Um, I hope this was a pretty meh game. Uh, it's... A lot of people were hoping it was reimagining of the N64 game, and I, I've heard different people say it's not that bad up from the world, and other people say it's nothing like it, so I'm not really sure how accurate it is. 
and I pulled it really up and down. Uh, the little big plan, a uh, little big planet calling. Uh, it's complete. It was in good condition. It was at the goodwill also. I think it was just two fifty or three dollars. I can't nimble. Uh, it doesn't have a. They they, the ones that have no price tags, the cashier basically wings up whatever the fuck they think it is. So I always have to ask because so them will be like ten bucks, and I'll be like, yeah, I'm not buying a little big plant for. A uh, little big plant carding for ten bucks. I, I probably wouldn't pick any of the little big plant games for ten bucks. Uh, not really a fan of the particular series. Now here is the Atlas game. I never heard of this, and uh, I actually got this um, traded with GameStop stuff. This is heavily damaged. Well, well, okay, maybe, maybe not heavily damaged. Uh, yeah, I'd say it's kind of between. Like it has the bad ones here and here and I highly doubt you'll be able to see them if I can't get the white kind of glare white over it nah I can't get the show it has a bunch of scratches and he said he couldn't get the play uh he said he did not buff it I think it might be recoverable if I buff it um it is apparently a tactics game I've never heard of this game if you know anything about this game let me know I I honestly never heard of this game before I don't know what it's associated with, or if Atlas even made it. Let me look here. Is there any other companies listed on here besides Atlas? I don't really see any other companies listed on here. This might actually be something Atlas owns. It looks very Persona-ish in its art a little, so I don't know. I, I honestly never heard of it, so I was like, sure. <laughs> I'll give it a spin in a... Uh, in a um, buffle. Um, weird uh, bargain games, Jaws Unleashed. A lot of people said this is GTA in the ocean. I heard this was very funny, but very budget. A lot of people made fun of it. It's a complete copy. It was in good condition. I thought it'd be funny for a stream overall. And I want to move some of this stuff because I don't want to put too much weight on that one particular box. So... <laughs> So, another budget game. Uh, this was uh, by the Infamous UFO Publishing. They published a lot of uh, bargain crap. Uh, this is pretty bad condition uh, with the case, but it is complete. And I think the disc was all white, I think. I mean, eh, it's a, it has a few little, little scuffs, but nothing I would say is too serious. But, yeah, the case is pretty uh, bad condition, I'd say. And then he gave me, he keeps giving me these Japanese PS2 games. Because I, I always mention somehow that I have a Japanese PS2. It's complete. It has everything. But, uh, I don't know. I And I keep getting Konami ones. I have the Silent Hill and that. I, I don't know what's why I keep ending up with these. But, eh. It was free. That one was a freebie. Okay, let's move on to stuff I got from my sister's trip. Not too much. Uh, one of the things I did is um, I bought a whole bunch of cheap DS and PSP games that were like just barely a dollar from Walmart's uh, sale. They had the sale. So I got a bunch of PSP and a few extra DS cases from that. And um, what I've been doing is I've been trading those games and keeping the case. And I took some of those up and did that. Um, at one store, I got two bucks for them, and then another I got like 34 cents, so <laughs> that that one was particular. and sadly, that was the one I bought most of this at. Uh, one of these I bought at the other store chain that gave two bucks each, so I essentially paid for it because I went to two of them, so I traded a copy each to them, so. Uh, on a clearance out at, um, Target, I got for five ninety eight. Well, Walmart's selling them for 10 which they were originally 20 bucks or 19.99 if you want to be picky. The Guitar Hero Live Charge Battery Pack. Um, I actually won one of these because I actually got the Guitar Hero Live thing really cheap at Goodwill for the PS4. But I didn't want to pay $10 for one of these because, I mean, it's, you know, once I'm done with the game, I pretty much wouldn't really use this anymore. Um... I don't really have too many batteries. I have a very small amount of Wii, Wii chargeable batteries I use for a few things. So, And I really don't like having a lot of batteries rolling around. They're very annoying. 
I remember having so many damn batteries back with the Wii and the 360. I just, ugh, I hate dealing with so many batteries. So, um, that was much better price for that. I was actually going to wait until Black Friday to see if there would be a good deal on them from Walmart. Because Walmart's been trying to get rid of them for quite a while, but they've just been hardcore 10 bucks. So, that's something that I was a little more willing to give. Okay, now, Nights into Dreams for the Sega Saturn. Uh, sadly, loose. Uh, they were in paper slips. Uh, my sister's husband uh, let me get a few of his little uh, thin little cases so I could, uh, you know, bring them home easier. But uh, it's in good condition. I never had nights into dreams for my Saturn, so that was a good. That was about ten bucks. That was very nice. I think I have this one, the uh, Sakura Wars. Um, I'm not sure which one this is. I think this is the one I got when I went to New York Comic Con last time. But it was loose. And obviously I had no way to really confirm if it was or not. And uh, Like an idiot, I didn't go double check that when I could have right now. But um, if it isn't the one I got from New York Comic Con a long time ago. Which was a complete box version even with the slip cover. Um, well then I got another one. If it is, then well, I guess I'll just give that away. <laughs> That was only like five bucks of that. Now these ones were the pricey ones. Uh, this one was nineteen ninety five, and it's called Dark Survival. Um, I've never heard of it. It looks like a weird hybrid of like a Lundra Zelda with a weird fighting thing. Like there's a picture here. It looks like a fighting game. I I, I don't know. It, it looks like it's a big cross of all kinds of different things. And the artwork, I don't know. There's something familiar about the art design of those characters. I don't know. They look very familiar. But it is complete. It's in great condition. It has its book on that. So, that was 20 bucks. Not too bad. Now, Gun Griffin, the Insoya in Conflict. And now, this was Game Arts game. This is 1995. And, uh, well, it was a Game Arts game. It's some kind of mech game. And, uh, I never really known Game Arts to really do that. But, uh, it's in good condition. It's complete. Graphics don't look too hot or anything. But, uh, it's complete. It's good. Then, here's one I never heard of. Tilk. I can't read the Japanese part. Uh, what side say? Yeah, if you want, <laughs> if you want to try and pronounce the the west of it, good luck. <laughs> uh, but uh, this looked like I mean the back it looks like it kind of an overhead little adventure game RPG thing, and apparently it also has voice actors and it looks like it has very nice animations. It's uh, very anime looking and it has a very nice art style to it, so it looks nice. But uh, can't. I see those screenshots really nice. They're very small. But uh, it looks nice. It's complete. It even has the little... Um, if These are the pieces that were on the side. I, I'm amazed how many Japanese people kept those. Um, it looked very nice. It was nineteen ninety five. So I spent about $100 though. Because there's one more thing I got there. I might as well pull it out. Uh, it was the one limited one game I missed. For $39.99. I think it was originally $29.99. So it was the 10 additional bucks. That um, I figured that he had a copy. I had some. You know my money in that. So I figured uh, I would get that. It looks very nice. It has a very simple title though. So. Uh, it looks like some kind of adventure game, but the graphics look really nice for it in the screenshots and that. But I'm not really sure if it's like a platform or adventure game. I'm not quite sure what it is. It's only not an RPG from what I've... Very little minor looking up I've done of it. But, um... Yeah, all that together, I spent about $100 there on that. Um, and then I got, uh, Lethal Enforcer 2 Gunfight for the Sega CD, I believe. Uh, yes, Sega CD, it was a good copy. It was, uh, just like four ninety nine, and like I said, I went to two stores, so, uh, I basically only paid like 95 cents because they gave me two bucks for them that, so. Um, honestly, uh, the, and this store is, um, what was it, Gamers? Yeah, it was called Gamers. Um, it's very common in my sister's area and a few of the states around now. Um, 
Honestly, this trip and the last trip, the game of stores haven't really had a lot of stuff I've been interested in. The very first time I went, they had tons of stuff. Um, my sister's boyfriend thinks because um, when I first visited them for the first time in the area, um, they had a lot of games, but it was their only store. Now they have like four locations now with a new, 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 new location that opened up. So he thinks they're spreading out because of that, and that does make sense. That does make sense. <sighs> okay, moving on. So. I think it's time. Let's show. Let's show this. This I got in the mail literally just yesterday. I know some people cringe a little because of the fan base for this particular title, but I try to not let fan bases ruin what I like. I used to do that when I was in middle school and early high school, and I learned that I should not let dumb fucking people be the reason I like or dislike something. I do like Undertale. I do think it's very overweighted, don't get me wrong. It's not the perfect holy grail in the world. But it was a very enjoyable game that had bizarre characters and shit. I would maybe even go to say maybe it's kind of a Yoko Taru kind of character design in an indie way. Because <laughs> a lot of the characters were bizarre that. But uh, it's very nice. Um, this was the collector's edition for the PS4. You can also get it for the Vita uh, from fan gamers. I don't know how long they're going to keep making these. Uh, it is very nice. The outside is very sturdy. It's not cheap at all. It's very nice. And you can see a locket, which is one of the main things you get with the normal collector's edition. There's a fancy art book you can get too if you pay a little extra. But uh, it's very nice. It slips out. It also came uh, with this in the packaging. I actually have not looked at this. But I can tell there was apparently like some kind of mini postal. It's like an advertisement mini postal thing. So I'm going to see if I can get out without damaging it. Thank goodness it's just a little smaller than the bag opening. But not by a whole lot. Eh, barely just a little. Ooh, what's... There's some... Oh, deal. And then we got a doggo stickle. Yes. The stickle of the annoying dog. Always funny. What is this? Artist Series Special Edition Fall Winter 2017. Golden Flowers. They must have broken your fall. Order number questions. Two gold. Find more two gold art on twitter.com. So it's a it's an art card. It's not an actual um, actual uh, postal. I thought maybe the thing that I saw inside with the advertisement was a postal. Uh, that is very nicely done, I have to say, very nice. And then this is just pure advertisement. Then if it, I, I thought this was gonna fold down into a postal. Yeah, to be honest, a few of these things I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind the Sands plush, the lesser dog scarf. Honestly, the lesser dog scarf thing. That's a brilliant idea, though. That's genius, to be honest. That's that's really clever. Uh, I, I do have to admit, Fan Game will have some very nice things for Undertale. I'm not a big fan of most of the short designs. There's one or two. I kind of disappointed I don't like any of the Papyrus uh, short designs. The Lesser Dog thing, though, that's, that's really... That's a very great idea for that. That works so good for that, so... Um, I don't know if I'll really uh, do a full playthrough of the PS4 version as a stream or anything, because it only has one minor thing that's new, and maybe I'll record that at least and put that in the playlist to show it off, but I, I don't see much point in doing a full another playthrough. Um, the only thing I never did was finish Genocide, and I don't think I'll ever will, because it's really freaking hard. So, anyway, there's the main thing you see there, the locket. So, let me show that off real quick, because it's actually very nice. Uh, it's a lot bigger than I thought. Uh, let's see, what's a good GBA game? There we go, so. GBA game, locket. So, there's a size comparison. Make sure it's lined up. I don't want to drop it, that would fucking piss me off. See, that's about the size, so... It's almost about as big as a GBA game there, so it's pretty decent size. Um, it is an actual working music box. That says best friends inside. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> oh, but the, then again, you can't hear it from there. I need an actual mic. Not sure how well that's picking up, but it just plays a little bit of the Undertale theme. And it's very nice. Um, it's also, I never personally had a music box. Uh, I don't have my flashlight on my desk here anymore. But um, it was actually interesting to look around at all the little mechanisms going around. Now, this was not a very expensive limited edition thing. I think it was only $39.99, I believe, without the art book. I think the art book's an additional 10 bucks. I think. Um, but um, that makes me curious how much these costed to make. I like how it slows, like, you know, when it's dying, it's just slowing down. But it's, it's actually very nice. It works with the song, actually, because, you know, it's like slowly going out, you know what I mean? But, uh, yeah, it's it's very nice, though. Um, this is one of the main reasons I won this. Um, it, it's just very nice. And I like, i definitely happy with how they packed it. Um, sometimes when you get special things like this, a lot of the packing is very mixed. So I, I am very satisfied with how they packed it. I think it's very nicely done. I think it's a very nice idea that he did that. It's very easy to put in and out, so very good packaging now. Now, the slightly annoying part is getting this additional box to come out. Yeah, there we go. Nothing special on here, though it does have some information on the bottom there, but uh, there's nothing in the box there. Nothing in the box. Inside, we get two more things and nothing. It would have been funny maybe have something in the inside part of the box. But uh, we get two things in here. First, we get the actual game of Undertale, which you see the city in the... You barely, faintly see the city. Um, nothing too different there. And you get a advertisement where nobody has to die. Or you could kill everyone. It has no waiting or barcode. Uh, apparently, to bring it up, um, apparently uh, the ESRB uh, getting probably very pissed off at people not giving them money uh, through limited one games and everyone doing these kind of things lately has decided to somehow convince all the console owners that they need to do that. And now they have to do it. So now they have to pay the ESRB because they're a bunch of greedy fucking head pieces of shit that don't do anything anymore but act like a bunch of elitist fuckholes. Sorry, I'm not a big fan of the ESRB. You know, wait games and that's it. You know, they have to do all kinds of political stupid shit and crap these days. It's like, shut up, just wait the game and that's it. That's all you need to do is wait the game, stop being a cock blocking piece of fucking shit. Now, this is not an instruction manual. It has better, very better artwork of the opening of Undertale. But I love how it's designed because it reminds me of the old Disney children's book. My, my sister had tons of these. Um, they are very nice with the golden spine that. Uh, the artwork is very nice. And so let me, let's see, what's a particular one that... Let's use that one with the, the conflict between the monsters and the human. Uh, it's not pixelated. It's very nicely drawn in that. Still in the same vein of the opening, though. Uh, it's very nice. Um, but no instructions. That. It has a reversible uh, cover. It shows the uh, annoying dog on the back, and it just says, Also Undertale. I'm not really sure why it says, Also Undertale. I... I not really sure about that. Somebody might explain that. Maybe it's a meme I missed. I haven't really been in the Undertale universe lately. <laughs> but um, pretty simple. Nothing too special outside the book. But on top of that, you get the Collector's Edition soundtrack for Undertale in a Blu-ray case. Uh, it has its own artwork that I haven't seen. It's very nice. But inside you get two, two discs and some reverse cover too. Let's see, 
the boss boss cover was actually in color instead of just a like a blues kind of environment but you get two discs nothing special on the disc now something if you play instruments somebody might actually be really interested in this because it has sheet music i'm not sure if it's sheet music for all the music but there is quite a bit in here and it folds out i'd hate to i think it is all of it because there's a lot of different stuff here and it also apparently there's lyrics in here too see the falling down Snowing. Well, maybe it's one thing. I'm not. Memory. I, I'm not sure how much is in here, but uh, it also gives you a list of all the soundtracks that. Uh, there's a lot of music on here too, so. Uh, that's one of the really good minimal things to me about until it, it had just this fantastic music, man. I don't think anyone can really deny that easily. It's a shame how the fan base. If we can become very intoxicated, uh, not to call out any names in particular. Actually, I need that out, so. <laughs> Got Overwatch in the case at the moment, so I don't really want to put that away. Oh, I forgot to put the box thing in, though. But, um, yeah, fandoms have been on the rise. Like, the whole thing with Wick and Morty right now has been crazy, you know? It's like, come on. See all these grown people stomping up down on mcdonald's counters it's like what the fuck is wrong with you <laughs> way to make your fan base look like shit good job good job so moving on to the last few things we got here is stack a ps4 and one vita game i got uh drive goals i like it looks like some kind of racing mech fighting thing i not too sure it has I'm assuming chicks that turn in the vehicles, which I know there's like some anime that came out recently like that too of that, so I picked that up. Um, I told a lot of people I was not going to buy this, but you might be like, so why do you have it? Because Goodwill had it for $24 new. <laughs> I'm not joking. It was strange. And right now you can get off uh, NeoGAF, I think, right now for like 35 So there's a few deals already going out for it. But I was like, yeah, I could probably do 24 Because uh, the reason I didn't want to buy it brand new for $60 is because I only knew they were going to do DLC. They were going to, it's Activision. They're going to do DLC for the fucking game. So I didn't want to pay $60 for something that was going to, because I mean like, when you think of all the DLC for the original game, that was probably almost $100 probably all together, I think. I'd have to look at the prices again, but still, it's like, it was fucking outrageous. And of course, for the fact that the first game was very underwhelming for its beginning life. I mean, it, it's a sad thing that it had a lot of really interesting ideas, but it did not implement a lot of things like stores, characters, personalities, and things very well at all. And... Half that shit didn't even get addressed for half the game's lifespan, so. But, um, I played a little bit of it. It actually has a lot of nice improvements, but I haven't gotten all the modes and stuff unlocked yet, so I can't really give a full impression on that yet. But, uh, besides that, it feels also a lot like Destiny still, so. Uh, Yee's Origin. Uh, this was originally a place, a, a, a PC game. Now, it's also important to note this PS4 version is censored. Uh, apparently, the original game was very bloody, and the bloody the blood has been extremely toned down or removed out of the game. I remember hearing that when they announced the PS4 version. A lot of people were very confused by that. Um, if you missed the limited edition version of this, PlayAsia does have uh, physical foreign copies that also have English, so you... And this is probably the most printed limited one game because they did not actually put a limit on this. They gave 24 hours to buy this. So it's also probably the most common limited one game too, probably, because of that. But um, I technically had this on Humble Bundle, do you know free? But uh, I don't know. I just like playing a lot of my stuff on console a lot unless it's just really bad. You know, I always say that I'm not a big flame graphics person. If it's serviceable, I'm pretty much fine with it. If it's Drakengard 3 <laughs> 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 <laughs>
quality and the PC version was better, that probably would be where I would want to, like, I love the story for Drake and God 3 and a lot of the characters and shit, but, oh my goodness, whoever programmed the fucking game was so terrible, oh my goodness. And he did five, what, I think it was five gigabytes of Mantoy install, I think, or was it two, or, I, I don't even remember now. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I'm not very picky, I just want to be serviceable, so. But, um, if, if for some reason that was bothering me, I'd have the PC version anyway, dear on free. Uh, no one that won as Divine Hearts, um, I think this was originally a mobile game, then it got a Wii digital version, and then, uh, it got on the PS4, and I would assume it's on Vita also. But uh, Remnant 1 did, well, a physical version of it. I also did a one-hour Let's Try of this game. Um, I don't think I have it public yet, but probably by the time you see this particular video, it will probably be public by now if you want to check out uh, what I thought about trying that out for now. Uh, in Plus Plus, uh, I don't know anything really about this game. I tried it for a little bit, so I know what kind of game it is, no screenshots or anything. Uh, it does actually have a booklet in this uh, big poster thing inside, oddly enough. Um, what it is, is basically it's a stickman version of Meat Boy where you have to gather. Um, the concept isn't necessarily well, Su Meat Boy. Super Meat Boy's big concept is obviously getting one side to the other side alive. Uh, in Plus Plus, you kind of have this set of levels. And you have to keep collecting these things that keep like a life meter that drains down and it carries over into these the set of stages. So you're kind of on a timer with a life gauge going through these stages of life and death. So uh, graphically it looks terrible. It, it looks like something in a flash thing. But uh, obviously that's not the game doesn't need to look good for what it's core concept is it's a game it, it's just a stick man version of meat boy willie in my opinion from what i played to that so battlefield 4 i got cheap at walmart uh dan and a bunch of friends he has um bought battlefield 4 and they were playing multiplayer so i picked it up played a little bit and i'd rather just play overwatch myself <laughs> But, uh, I mean, it, it works. Uh, also, to be fair, I've never actually played any of the Battlefield games. And I'm sure if any of you have played them, I'm pretty sure most of you will tell me much older ones are probably better, probably. Because uh, that's usually a common case with a lot of the big first-person shows. Like, I mean, personally, with me and Call of Duty, I actually like a lot of the older Call of Duties uh, way, way much more than a lot of the newer ones. So, Dang! Gone Wamba V3 Killing Harmony. Now, I got the PS4 version of this. I have the Vita versions of 1 and 2. And I've been very tempted to get the PS4 version of the um, Reloaded version. Though I was very surprised to hear that the Reloaded version has its own trophy list. That has a butchered uh, mix of trophies from the separated Vita games. Which I thought was very odd. Uh, it does have reverse uh, cover art. And it even has a code booklet. And the day one edition also includes a soundtrack disc. So all the more reason to get. But um, even though the booklet is in color. It's, uh, everyone has a very darkened design. So uh, the booklet is basically just telling some stuff about all the students and things uh it does not spoil anything it just gives you what they're the ultimate of except for one one you don't know the ultimate of i'm sure that's a big spoiler plot thing probably later on the story but you get um you get uh, basically all the same stuff you would in the prologue where you meet everyone talk to everyone with a little you know little tidbits and things and that about them and that so it, it just kind of Gives a little bit more about them and that, but um, that's pretty much all aside from a beginning page thing though. It's just uh, a little thing of all the characters that... I do not know if this booklet's a day one special thing. I don't know. 
Um, but I, from what I understand, the soundtrack is. So if you want the soundtrack, uh, day one edition. And um, I'm pretty sure it's only with the PS4 version. And that's probably what they're trying to justify. It's $60 price tag. Yes, uh, this is $60. And the Vita version is $39.99, which has been the basic price of the other games on the Vita. Um, that actually was very strange to me. I mean, soundtracks don't usually cost a lot because discs aren't expensive. So, I I can't really say 20 additional bucks being a huge soundtrack thing. So, I guess that's up in the air if you really want a physical version that's official or that. But, uh, I, I got the PS4 version because I wanted to be able to stream it in nice quality. I can stream the Vita game. But, uh, well, not stream, I record. I'm, I'm recording it, I'm not streaming it. Uh, some of those all live on my gameplay channel, if you want to check those out, too. Um, I'm having those here and there, I'm not going hardcore on them. Um, I plan on getting some more Dragon Guard 2 stuff going. But uh, my newest, newest thing I actually ordered was the um, Cyber... Cyber Dimension Neptunia 4 Goddess Online. Now, I've only played some of the Neptunia games. Uh, I know Lumina really loves the uh, the Neptunia games. Uh, this is supposed to be like a dot hack kind of thing with it, with actual online. So, uh, I'm looking forward to try it to see if it's good. It's supposed to be mainly a hack and slash kind of game, though. So, uh, I'll be interested to see if it's pretty fun, though. And then lastly, an item in the book category for a dollar, Red Dead Redemption's uh, guidebook. No whipped pages. It's a little bent in the corners of that, but overall it's pretty good. Um, I really liked it, Red Dead Revolver, which is the Force game. The real Force game. Well, I, I, eh, sorry, I just, I, I know some people just don't actually know it existed. There was a PS2 game that's actually the Force yeah, with the sequel coming out, everyone's like, Force, Force, Force! It's like, yeah. But, I mean, to be fair, this is a GTA Western game. The Force was like a third person Western game, so it was not GTA style. But still, I, I was, I really liked it, uh, Revolver. Uh, with the Redemption, I don't know. I mean, I like the idea, don't get me wrong. I just, I'm not a big GTA person or sandbox person these days. Uh, around at least the GTA kind of thing where you're either a criminal or a cop or a crooked person or more you can be good or evil kind of thing without really a lot more interesting things. Uh, that's why I'm, I think I would really like the Sunset, um, what was it? Sunset, what was the West? That, that, that Xbox One exclusive, uh, what was it? Sunset, fuck, I forgot the full title, damn it. Um, cause that's like a weird jet set radio kind of vibe to me, mixed with a little infamous that. I, I think that might actually be a really good game, in my opinion, in that kind of sandbox thing. But a lot of sandbox games just don't interest me. I played this, I mean, PS1 and PS2 were so chalk filled with fucking sandbox games. So many fucking sandbox games. I mean, tons of them. Now, I played Western ones. Gun was a really good one. Nah, I'm not trying to say this is a bad one. I just... I'm just really sick of sandbox games is basically what I'm saying. But uh, I have actually been thinking of doing a Let's Play of Red Dead Redemption. Um, I know a lot of my friends love the hell out of it. And it's been a long time since I have played a sandbox game. So, I, you know, I have actually been interested to do a Let's Play... Of what did redemption of that? Maybe I don't know. <laughs> Let me know if you're interested. You could help convince me. Maybe. <laughs> but um, that is all my pickups for the last few weeks and that, and for my trip from my sister, I'd say I got some nice stuff, and I've I've definitely been enjoying my Switch. Uh, it is very fun and uh, pretty convenient. The only thing I just hate about it is that uploading photos is stupid. They need to either incorporate a web browser so you can use a uh, actual website uploading to do multiple files or let you fucking use a USB drive. It has USB ports. 
They don't want you to use a USB drive because obviously hackers will use that to get around the system. And it will happen. It will happen. No matter what Nintendo does, those USB drivers will get used by something somehow eventually. Just not now. But I think it's bullshit that they don't let you use them because they're just a bunch of chicken shits of hackers. Because essentially the only thing you can do on the Switch is one by one either Facebook or Twitter one photo at a time. I got hundreds of Splatoon pictures of people's artwork and they want me to upload those one by one. Like fuck you Nintendo. Why, why did you do that? Now, you can take the, the micro card out, and if your computer can somehow fucking weed that, which I don't, so so I'm kind of fucked on that for now, that I'm hoping in the future, because apparently Nintendo does say they uh, do plan to have a web browser, which is weird that it doesn't have a web browser. I mean, even the fucking Xbox One has a web browser, and I think the 360 eventually actually added a web browser. I know it didn't have one when I played it hardcore. Uh, I think it eventually added a browser, I think. I'm not 100% sure. But, I mean, it's like, why doesn't it have a browser? Because, I mean, the Wii and the Wii U had a browser. It's very bizarre. It does not have... A fucking DS has a browser. Why doesn't the Switch have a browser on it? Because at least I could upload them faster using Facebook's uh, upload like I do with my PlayStation TV. And to be fair, that same criticism. PlayStation TV doesn't let you also use a USB drive. Probably for the same reason. Anyway, um, update-wise, um, we go, getting back to work, uh, sadly, it seems that, uh, they kind of regretted having that one week down, and we're doing a Friday or two, um, they did do last Friday when I was at my sister's, and we worked it this Friday, which is why I didn't stream yesterday of the week I'm recording, and they're saying we're probably working next Friday, but after that, they're hoping not to do any more. And I hope it stays like that. Come on, people. I don't want fucking overtime. You know that. <laughs> but, um, I plan on making Drake and God 2 a offline recording thing. Um, what I've been mainly doing during my live streams, if you haven't uh, watched my live streams, um, essentially, I, I kind of give a lot of viewers a choice on what to play next when I do an hour or two of something and be like, okay, let's switch to a different game of that if we're not doing a hardcore playing through a particular game of that. Um, and Dragon God 2 has just really been ignored. And like I said, I want to get finished. It's been wadding in abyssal hell. And like I said, I want to finish that before I bring Alundra. So uh, I'm going to make it a just go to normal recordings and finish that off. And that's probably better anyway, because I'm going to be basically what we playing the entire game two more times to get the other two endings. And let me tell you, the last ending's pretty disappointing. The second one's a little interesting. But, I mean, overall, it doesn't add a whole lot new compared to what Drake and God 1 and 3 do in those regards. <laughs> But, um, yeah, I want to get that done, so that's what I'm going to do. Um, if you haven't been seeing, and I, as I said, I've been doing Dompa Wampa 3. Join the fuck out of it. I'm currently done with Chapter 2. Still think the Trial 1 was the more fucked up one. Trial 2, I was a little disappointed with who was the mortal. Not because of who, just because... Because it just, there was just one vague thing that didn't really blow my mind. I mean, the second it came back around to that little thing, it's like, oh, well, they did it then. Because that, that, it makes sense now. And that. But um, I thought the Force case was really mind fuckly blowing my mind shit. So, um, and you probably want to watch your volume when you watch the trial. I scream a lot. <laughs> um,. Uh, Final Fantasy VII's been, uh, what, been getting streamed lately. Um, but probably next time I stream I'll do some Splatoon 2 and stuff for that. But, um, yeah, that's not been going 
not too much new going on. Um, I've been debating what I want to do for Halloween. I've actually been also considering Deadly Plan Mission. I've been talking with uh, Stream Chat that uh, I was planning on doing Bloodborne again with its DLC and new updated contents from when I originally played the game. But uh, Deadly Plan Mission would also fit that bill too. So, mm. But anyway, um, that's pretty much all that's going new with that. So not, not anything too big of that. Everything, you know, life's going good and that. So anyway, if you have any question or anything down uh, if you have a question or comment please leave a comment down below and i will get back with you because i like interacting with my viewers unlike a lot of other big people who never respond to anyone but anyway thank you for watching until next time to the loose <laughs>